Hello and welcome to another edition of We Move with Super Eagles, a program that keeps you informed about the team's preparations for Africa's biggest uh, sporting spectacle. My name is Tolu Shodade. This program comes your way proudly uh, by the official communications partners of Nigeria's national football teams, most especially the Super Eagles of Nigeria, that is MTN. I'm not doing this alone. I've got the guys, the usual suspects here with me. Bada Akisude Johnson is here. Great to have you again, Bada. And it's starting to feel like we're getting into the African fiesta. Yeah, uh, we, we can see it. We can almost touch it. As I said on the last episode, every episode brings us closer uh, to the 9th of, of January when the first ball is kicked. And we really can't wait. We've started this countdown now for about a couple of months. Uh, it's a home stretch. As we like to say in football, uh, this is the business end. This is the business end. <laughs> All right. Um, the Queen of Freebies is also back on this edition. Did we miss you? Of course you guys. Oh, sir. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Why wouldn't you miss us? me? Not of me. Course. <laughs> he hates of joking. course he did. <laughs> but it's good to have you. Um, managerial change at the Super Eagles. Yes. Um, Bada is excited, I'm sure. Of course. <laughs> yes. But, um, however, I actually think it was wrong timing, but... We'll get into that later on in the show. All right, so we'll take a break. When we come back, we will move with Super Eagles. MTN, official communication partners of the Super Eagles and other national football teams are poised to follow the Super Eagles wherever they go in the special bumper countdown to Africa's greatest football fiesta. The Eagle Eye segment is a fly on the wall in the team camp as we bring exclusive and entertaining behind-the-scenes activities of the teams while talking tough curates, informative and captivating one-on-one -on -one chats with the players and coaching staff. Head-to-head -head pit Super Eagle stars against each other as we review their stats and various forms while team focus segment highlights other African teams and how they are prepping for the tournament ahead. Beneath their wings, we move. The human interest hub of the show projects the MTN We Move spirit as we capture motivational grass to grace stories of Super Eagles top stars. While Star Players to Watch brings to the fore the key players in all the African teams to keep an eye out for. Blast from the past takes you down memory lane to Super Eagles' glorious moment in the summit of continental football history. While Game On rewards our team in followers and active social media base with exciting rewards from MTN as we move to the epic celebration of African soccer. Of course, the lighter note segment ignites a side attraction of an unequaled blaze of value-added entertainment with heartwarming comedy and music, a unique collabo of soccer and fun. Join us as we move with the Super Eagles to higher heights of continental glory. For more details, follow us on at MTNNG, at MTN Nigeria, on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Welcome, MTN. Everywhere you go. All right, then. Welcome back. It is still We Move with Super Eagles. And it's not a lot of times that you talk about the second coming of everyone, anyone, apart from maybe the Savior in some religions. But in the, in the case of the former Super Eagles manager, Osne Guavoin, he has now been appointed as the interim boss of the national team. What interim means still is wide open. But let me start with you. Um, they say he's been appointed the interim boss, but we're not quite sure whether he'll be there for the African Fiesta, whether he'll go on uh, to coach the team through that uh, final uh, World Cup qualifying playoff. But it is good to see him back. But the scope of his job is what we are not really, we're not really sure what it is. Well, I will think um, what, what stands to reason, what makes sense, um, is that he will coach the tournament, mm. the one that starts in a few weeks, because there's not enough time uh, to appoint him and then have him not coach a game and bring someone or maybe have him work alongside someone they may be looking for. We don't have information to that re in that regard. What we know is that the plan looks like um, he'll be in charge during the tournament and then afterwards, based on how well he fares, uh, a decision is then made whether to um, appoint him in full um, capacity ahead of the, the, the World Cup or bring on someone else. Um, as you said, I mean, he's not um, a newcomer to the stage. Mm. Uh, was there at the uh, tournament in 2006. Mm -hmm. um, captained us on, pitch, on the pitch in 94 when we won uh, in Tunisia. A legend of the game uh, in, in Nigeria, played in Europe, as big as they come, and was technical uh, director of the, the Football Federation up until he was appointed. Yeah. Um, but as Ose mentioned, um, you ask yourself, has he not been handicapped 
by the shortness of time that he has to prepare a team. Mm. If he had been appointed a month out, at about the time when we, we sort of knew that General Royal was toast, he probably would have had a bit more time, you mm. know, to prepare. But now, it is what it is. It's got just about two and a half weeks. All right, it is what it is. And the one thing we have to understand is that whether or not he's successful at the uh, tournament will not, this will not just uh, be his um, problem because... There is the problem of the fact that when Gennot Roy was hired, uh, we knew it was Gennot Roy. We knew he had two assistants. I mean, you know, that was it. But on this occasion, um, it's safe to say that it's either the NFF are not so trusting of Austin Aguirre that they need for him to have as many assistants as they've named. We can get those assistants on. Um, he has an assistant coach. The ambassador is now attached to the team. There's a whole lot of... It almost feels like a party going to the uh, African Fiesta. Rush, actually, uh, well, I don't. I don't necessarily think it's because they don't trust him. Um, like Pinnick said, one of um, Ross, um, should I say, one of his major problems was he couldn't instill discipline in the players. Really? Yes, that is what he said, right? And personally, naturally, um, when they are, there will obviously be boys that are. Should I say hurt? I don't want to, not hurt, but do you get what I mean? With the Ross exit, there are people that are not quite accepting so players. So make all of that right. Do you understand? So I just feel basically, I mean, when there's a Kanru, there's a JJ Okocha, it comes with some sort of respect because I don't think that those boys will give Iguavon the respect that he deserves, honestly. If they don't respect the Guava, they won't then respect Then should be better. No, no, I think, no, I actually think that, come on, brother. I think that they would respect a Kanru and a JJ more than so. they would the truth of the matter Iguavon, is that honestly. Those guys, if there's a discipline issue, it's yeah. not, it's not down to the personality coaching them. Mm. It's about how that person that personality exerts his authority. Yes. If and well, I mean everyone course, says Eguavon is relatively quiet. So yeah, so you can be quiet but assertive. You can be quiet and be an excellent no nonsense manager. And there are you know all kinds of managers like Carlo Ancelotti, for instance, is not the most you know expressive. He's not the most vocal. Yeah, he's not the most vocal. But you can't you can't try nonsense with him. You're out of the team. So for me, I think that. It, what that, this many cooks, you know, in the kitchen speaks of is confusion. It's not a party. It's not a jamboree. Mm. What exact value would right. each individual be I, adding to this team? Honestly, it's, look I at the caliber discern. of people that we've right, so brought. For let's hold the say. conversation there for now. We've still got a lot to get to on the show. We will still be looking at that, that entire party that has been appointed behind uh, Austin Aguavano. We'll also be looking at the tenor of the Franco-German tactician, Gennot Rohr, who has now been relieved of his duties as Super Eagles manager. Then still we move with Super Eagles. We'll take a break and we'll be right back after this. you chat, call, read, play, and listen to music. Enjoy Ayoba with MTN. Download Ayoba now. All right, welcome back. It is still We Move with Super Eagles. Don't forget that the program is proudly brought to you by MTN, the official communications partners of Nigeria's national football teams, most especially the Super Eagles of Nigeria. Still got the guys here. And we talked about an entourage. You could call it a party, whatever you might want to call it. Um, let's quickly look at the guys who are associated with the Super Eagles in one way or the other heading to the African Fiesta. First up, um, Austin J.J. Okocha, Khan Wanko, Garbalawa, they've been named Bada as um, team ambassadors. That, that's, um, they said they've been appointed to provide technical and ambassadorial support for the Super Eagles. I understand the ambassadorial part. The technical part is where I don't get yeah, I don't get it either. Um, not one of these uh, individuals has functioned in the technical capacity in the past anywhere, none that I know of. Um, so to say that, you know, uh, they'll provide technical support in a setup where there are actual technical people, like the manager himself, like um, the head coach, you know, people who understand technicalities of football. And you can argue, yes, they're ex-internationals, they should know, but they retired eons ago. So... If they haven't been functioning in technical capacity in the recent past, 
why expect it of them? If you want them to be ambassadors, to be the faces of the team, to bring good chair, to bring you know good mm. chemistry within the team and around the team, I get that. But the technical bit, they'll have to explain. Also, you don't get the feeling that maybe we're playing the Ivory Coast in the semi-finals and it's going to extra time and that part where the where the players are all tired, then these guys come up and they're like, hey guys. The Mora, you know, the other day we spoke about... That's um, technical. The other, <laughs> the other time we were speaking about your guy, um, Igalo, and you were like, I, I was like, he, if he's going to the tournament, it's probably to give them Ginger and Mora. I think <laughs> that's exactly what can Ginger can be technical. And JJ. That's like Ginger the street word for technical. I will be a Cameroon. I'll give them the support and the moral that they need. JJ Cheerleading <laughs> and, and technical impute are two different, are two different things. things. Two different things. You know, just like pom-poms, though. That's all yeah, they need to we, do. We, we've got to be clear yeah. about that. And the guys who are responsible for the technical matters need to know that there won't be any interference. Yeah. Because when you name people like this, what you do is you open the opportunity for them to feel like they must do something, something. in that regard. And then they begin to interfere. And there can be ego clashes. Forget that these guys are supposed to be friends and ex-teammates. When the chips are down, mm. someone needs to carry the can. At the end of the day, you may find a situation where mm. if things don't go right, the coach gets fired and they get retained as ambassadors and technical whatever. Mm. So, you know, you've got to be able to be clear about All what right. roles each of these guys will be playing. All right, so to the decision that shocked me to be honest um, as far as the assistant manager of the super eagles is salisu yusuf he was the direct assistant of genot raw he spent lots of years with um genot raw when he was super eagles manager and you got the feeling that once genot raw goes out of the picture yeah he should same. just be the guy who steps in yeah uh, naturally but i think also the reason why um, Salish Yusuf isn't, isn't the Super Eagles manager now. The Super Eagles manager now is because, I mean, like, there's still a lot of people that are still, uh, has, has, they've still not gotten over the cash gift thingy. Mm. So I actually feel like... But if he's in the setup, I then know, then because a lot of people still, it's one thing to be the assistant with that kind of image and then coming in as the manager, there'll be a lot of questions. And since we're already talking about the whole corruption thing, people will then begin to look at the entire federation as being corrupt. Honestly, I feel like that's the angle you're coming from because I really don't see why he was... Re um, why he was... Um, assistant to get a Why he was assistant to get a raw, but can't step up now, honestly. But I feel like that's the angle that the NFF are coming from. Honestly, that's it. Mm. Then, then we have the, the doctor with all the books. I mean, even you don't have a master's in sports management. To, he to he knows honest, everything. He I, knows I everything. Think, I, I think that uh, these guys aren't very clear what it is that they want to do or want to achieve. As Ose said, they feared the backlash that would have, you know, um, greeted the announcement of a Salisu uh, Yusuf as national team um, manager in an inter interim capacity. Um, but even with the fact that he's been put on the team, it begs the question of, do we ever get to a point where we've got standards? Because mm -hmm. here's a guy who was disgraced, you know, and those allegations were proven. It's not like people just made up, you know, the stories. So, video evidence. Yeah, there was video evidence bringing him back. All right, so let's talk about the other assistants um, because it's not just one assistant. Even when we've got three ambassadors, the coach still has a barrage of assistants to work with. And if we can quickly look at those guys, um, Dr. Terry uh, Iguauje. Never heard of him, but he has found a way to make it to the African fiesta. I mean, uh, he's got the master's degree in his favor. Um, I hear he's the founder of one sports association, something in Pennsylvania. He played in the U.S. So he's got the backing. You know, in this country, we like people that, that, that have the backing. <laughs> doctor, doctor, engineer. So that's it. He's got the backing. He's read a lot of books. He's mm. got a master's degree. He's got a doctorate in sports management the, the, and all of that the stuff. The next so. man we're looking at hasn't got a master's degree, by the way. Um, Joseph Yobo, a lot of talk around him. They said he still doesn't have the requisite um, uh, qualification yeah. to even be on the bench for the Super League. Somehow he manages to still be there. I don't know whether he started to take it, but he's probably one positive from the Gennot Roa um, era. Yeah, and I hope that he learned a, a thing or two uh, about management when, you know, Genaro was here. Um, I think I can live with Joseph Yobo being on the team because he continues his education, or so how I would say it. So he's probably one for the future, mm. um, and being a part of the setup doesn't hurt. Mm. You know, he's not going to be calling the shots or anything. Um, he just carries on learning, carries on developing, and that's okay. And must go get those badges, though. Oh, as quickly as they can. Mm -hmm. mm. 
All right, let's look at the next man, Aloy Agu. There are not a lot of men who have been goalkeeper coaches uh, to the national team. He's probably one of the few, along with Ike uh, Shorumu. He merits being on that team. Definitely. Uh, so obviously, we've been talking. We've been talking. We've been given a lot of backlash to the entourage and the assistants and all of that. But this is one man who definitely should be um, on that team. And uh, hopefully, just like uh, Joseph Yobo, um, when Bada was um, talking about Yobo, mm. hopefully he gets the job done. Um, he gets the he gets the Super Eagles to the mm. tournament, and hopefully they win. Even though Eguavon is not noted not for, I mean, his third position kind of shall call it spell. I mean. At Aimba third position at um, the 2006 tournament, we got to the top place finish. He will, so he will shock maybe you. this will be another. Time. I guess he will shock you. All right, let's go next to Eagle Land. It's time to take a look at the tenor of the recently passed the Super Eagles coach, the Franco-German tactician Geno Roa as Super Eagles manager. This time, the players speak on the qualities of the ex-coach. It's like a father figure to the team. He's a very funny guy. He's hard work when it comes to work. He works hard. He shouts when he needs to shout. He encourages the boys. And he's always jovial. And I think the lads like him and he has bring unity and oneness to the team. I think he's, um, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a very calm, calm, calm coach. And uh, I think he, he likes players who work hard and uh, players that are humble and they play. So uh, I think he, he's a very good coach for the Super Eagles and he, he really knows the kind of player he wants. Six o'clock in the morning, get him set for another day. Another chance to change my story. I believe in my hustle. I know be lazy, Pesino. But life is just been at me, Baspos. If it don't close, I go find another. If I fall down, I go try to cover. Hey, oh, hey, oh. If it ever walk me, I know they bother. Cause I believe, say, I go surely prosper. Whatever life brings, we move. Turn up your dreams. MTN, everywhere you go. All right, welcome back. It is still We Move with Super Eagles, proudly brought to you by MTN. And uh, we went to the streets just before we head to the uh, Game On segment. We went out and asked the Nigerians what they feel about the new hiring of Austin Aguaboyne as the interim boss of the Super Eagles. How far do they think this man can take the Super Eagles on his second coming? Let's see what Nigerians had to say. It's a very bright and sunny day here in Lagos. And of course, this is We Move With Super Eagles. But this is a special segment on the street. This is On The Move. I'm with a veteran Super Eagles fan. His name is Mr. Lukman Sulaiman, who is a bit of a legend in this part because everyone is like, Ask him questions from the 60s or the 80s. He's going to give you the bright answers. So we're not going to go that far. We're just going to ask you, sir, what are your thoughts on the fact that Austin Eguavon is the new interim coach of the Super Eagles? Do you think he can take us all the way to win the competition next year? Thank you, my brother. I hope, I'm very happy. The chief of the NFA. So uh, Austin Eguavon is carrying he carry Super Eagles to Cameroon to win the Nations Cup. Obviously, he's a former player of Nigeria Super Eagles. 1994, is a captain of Super Eagles. So he's carry his calibration, he get calibers to win the national score for Super Ego. Leko is a fan of the Super Egos. Now, real quick, Leko, not to waste your time. Do you think Austin Neguavoy can take us all the way next year in the competition? Um, yes, I think so. Why? Because, number one, he's my uh, fans, favorite fans, but Sha. He go try. He go try okay. his best. Hey, man, there you go. It's all good. He thinks he's going to try. Baba, thanks so much for your time. Yeah, no, thank you. You feel he can take us all the way? Uh, I'm not seeing on this tournament. I don't, I'm not seeing us coming first, but maybe second. What, or maybe, you, oh, you're okay with us coming second? Yeah, yeah. I'm not seeing us coming first because I don't think 
he is really prepared for this. Well, it's, you know? it's, the period is too short, don't you think? The, the preparation is too short for him. And at the end of the day, anything that comes out, we should take it like that. I am with a very beautiful woman. Her name is Juma K, but we call her Jimmy for short, Abby. Yes. <laughs> lovely smile, Jimmy. Very lovely smile. Now, real quick, Jimmy, the national team have made a bit of a change in the helm in terms of the coach. We have an interim coach right now. His name is Austin Eguavoin, a legend of Nigerian football. Do you think he can take us all the way next year? Are you confident? No, uh, no, I don't think so because <laughs> we still have to get to, you know, we still have to do something. It's too, it's too early. Mm. So, so I think it's, it's too short, you feel? Short. Yeah, it's too short. So what do you think our best position will be? Second, third, fourth, group stage exit? Let me just say third. Oh my God, you want us to get another bronze medal? Aren't you tired of winning bronze medals? <laughs> Let me just say, let's just insert it ourselves. Third, it's fair, yeah. I guess it's another golden third, according to Jimmy, for the Super <laughs> Eagles come next year. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. Well, we wish Austin Eguavon the very best in his new role. Well, in the studio now, it's time for Game On. This is that part of the show where we reward our lovely audience with freebies upon the completion of a task. Are you guys ready for today's task? Yeah. How ready are you? Very ready. I need to hear your voice. How ready? Very ready. All right, so today's task is very, very simple. It's called the Keepy Uppy. All you need to do is raise this ball. Mm, let's say, should we say 10 or 15? 10, 15? What's it going to be? 10. You guys are lazy. 15. We're going for 15. So I need two contestants. Ah, what's going on? All right. We've got you and you. All right, let's go. Let's go very quickly. Make your way to the front. Yes. So I have you on one side and the other gentleman on the other side. Who's going to go first? Yellow, yellow. MTN. MTN. Who's going to go first? Blue. <laughs> All right. The Can audience have spoken. Shoes? Sorry? Can I put my shoes? Is that like your lucky charm is your feet? Uh -huh. Like your yeah. feet. Okay. If you don't make 15 after taking off these shoes. <laughs> All right, let's go. One, two, three, go. It's okay, don't show off. It's okay, you say you're ready. It's okay, it's okay. What is going on? Okay. In three, two, one, let's go. Hey. Ah. Hey. Thank you so much. You can make your way back to your seat. Pick up your shoe, pick your shoe, pick your shoe. Thank you very much. All right, you are our winner for today. Come this way. Congratulations, this is for you. Thankfully, your feet didn't fail you like the other man. What do you have to say to MTN? Thank you very much, MTN, and I hope to get more of this. So, we move with Super Eagles. When next you're coming, wear yellow. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Go back to your seat. Thank you so much. All right, guys, and with that, we have come to the end of the Game On segment. Remember to follow the conversation online on Instagram. It's at MTNNG. Facebook and YouTube is at MTN Nigeria. Tolu! We're closer to Cameroon, aren't we? Yeah, we are closer to Cameroon. We're not closer to you. You're not giving us anything. Uh, but but uh, let's be very, very open about this. Um, just before we go, we every show, when we talk about the team in focus, we ask whether or not we cancel them out as one of the teams that we think will go all the way. With Austin Aguavoin, is he capable, is he the man to win the African fiesta for the Super Eagles? I doubt it. Um, I don't think it's going to happen. I hope to be pleasantly surprised or proven wrong. But um, you don't appoint a new manager mm. on the eve of a tournament and have that team go all the way. Um, I can't remember in recent history that happening in any competition. Mm. But the good thing is, the last time the Super Eagles did win the African fiesta, we didn't think they were going to win it. So... We might pleasantly surprise by that. So that's the show uh, for today. We move with Super Eagles. Remember, if you missed this edition, all you have to do to watch uh, this episode and f uh, previous episodes of the show is to go to YouTube. That is at MTN Nigeria to watch a previous edition of We Move With Super Eagles. Until next time, my name is Tolu Shotari. Hope you had fun. We'll see you guys.